One of my favorite things about 3D printing is the ability to rapidly prototype new designs for problems that I am facing. This is a Samsung T5, and every video that I film is filmed onto this drive. But the problem is, anytime I remove it from the camera and take it over to the desk, I have to deal with USB cables dragging all over the place because there's no real good place to put this. 3D printing for me has always been more practical. It's about taking ideas and concepts and bringing them to life so we can solve problems that exist in the real world. So today, let's do exactly that. Go over to Blender and solve a problem that I've been dealing with. This Blender video is going to be a continuation for the last video that I did. And in this video, I'm going to show you a few more things that you need to know when designing for 3D printing in Blender. So I've already made a mock-up of the Samsung T5 in Blender. And this basic mock-up that I've created is going to be the center of the whole design that we'll be working on today. Before I get too far into the design, let me show you a few things about Blender for 3D printing. One question I've been asked over and over again is, do I need to make the object solid? The answer is no, because the way Blender works and 3D modeling works in general, there's no reason to solidify an object. There are certain instances where you want to use the solidify modifier, but you generally don't need it to make an object solid for 3D printing. And let me show you why. If we go up to the top right and click our overlays drop down, we can hit face orientation. What this does is it shows us the orientation of the faces for our 3D model. Now that I've enabled face orientation, we can go in edit mode. And once we're in edit mode, I'll just make sure that I press three to go into face edit. And then I can click a face right here and delete it. We'll delete that face and you'll notice that the inside of this object is red. All this is doing is showing us the orientation of the normals for the object's faces. And the orientation for the normals is one of the most important parts for 3D printing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this object now, one right next to the other. And for one of these, I'm going to delete a section, making it hollow on the inside. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and export this so I can illustrate what's exactly happening. Now that I've imported the file into Orca Slicer, we can see in the bottom right that we have four non-manifold edges. Non-manifold can mean a few different things, but basically what it's telling us right here is we have a hole in our 3D model. Using face orientation in Blender is an easy way to see if we have issues with our geometry for our 3D model. Immediately we'll see any issues will show up in red as now we have a hole in our object showing that it's non-manifold. And we can leave this setting enabled to make sure that as we're modeling, nothing's going on with our 3D model that will cause a problem in the future. So for an object like this, there's no reason to solidify the object as the geometry itself and the outward facing walls acts as the solid of the object. Being able to create your own designs and rapidly prototype is one of the most exciting things about 3D modeling. And with today's sponsor, PCBWay, it's even easier than ever. With PCBWay services like 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, and even custom PCBs, there's never been a better time to bring your ideas into reality. And the two services I find the most exciting is their stainless steel 3D printing and their titanium 3D printing. And right now, PCBWay is having a massive sale from December 12th all the way to January 12th, saving you up to 50% off. So if you have an idea for a design or a part that you want to get manufactured, make sure you check out today's sponsor, PCBWay, at PCBWay.com to save up to 50% off. This object right here, the T5 mock-up that I've already made, we're going to go ahead and leave alone right now. Now what I'll do is I'll go in here and we'll just add another cube. We'll scale that down and then center that on the T5. And then once we have that centered, we're just going to drag these edges over here and give it a basic rough shape. Now I'm simply going to press two to go into edges mode and select the two bottom corner edges and hit B to go into bevel mode. And this is going to give me my basic edge profile that will help match my Samsung T5. Now that I've created the basic geometry for the dock, let's go ahead and disable the T5 mockup to show you exactly how the geometry looks as it is now. So what we see here is a solid block. If you remember our last video, what we need to do now is use a Boolean modifier so we can slide our Samsung T5 into this dock as there's nowhere to dock it right now since it is a solid object. But there's a very big difference between how we use modifiers in the last video and in today's video. 
The way we did this in the previous video is once we added our modifier, we came up here to the drop down menu and hit apply. But today we won't be doing that. We're going to be doing this a little bit different. So this time what we're going to do is come up here to our outliner window, right click and hit new collection. And then we'll double click this and name this cuts. And all I want to do is move the T5 inside the cuts folder. And you can see the object still exists, but we can hide this entire collection right here. And there we have our hole. It's as if the modifier is being applied without destroying the object itself. Essentially what's happening is our modifier is being applied in real time without hitting the apply button. And we can hide it from view simply by using our collections over here in our outliner window. The benefit to using non-applied modifiers in a collection like cuts is that we're not being destructive to our main geometry. So we can go in and make design decisions down the road if we change our mind on exactly how we want something to work. We can even take our modifiers themselves and modify the geometry of the object with the modifier applied. I still need to make a few changes to this T5 dock. So let me go ahead and add a few more modifiers to show you how they act when they're stacked together in the collections. Since I'll be mounting this in the bottom of the desk with some basic screws, I'm gonna need some holes in the back of the dock so I can pass the screws through. So just like in the prior video, I'm gonna go ahead and add a mesh and we'll punch some holes through our geometry with the use of modifiers. To do this, I'm gonna add a cylinder right here and then scale it down. Now my screws are going to be about four millimeters. So we'll go ahead and punch this through right here for about six millimeters. Then we'll duplicate that and bring it over here. Now that I have the pass through for my screws, I'll go over here and I'll double click the object to give it a name like screw holes. And we'll drop it into our cuts. And you can see that that completely disappears. But now we can select our housing, go to add modifiers, go to Boolean, and then we can select our screw holes. And now our screw holes are in our dock housing. Now that the Boolean modifier has been added to the dock, you can see if we rotate our object that all our normals are out facing and there's no red on our model, letting us know that we have no issues with non-manifold edges or holes in our geometry. I need to point out something that's very important when using programs like Blender to model for 3D printing, and that's dealing with non-manifold edges. You can have non-manifold edges in several different situations, and there's several things that create non-manifold edges, it's a very nuanced topic that I really can't get into today. But I want to show you something about bevels that's really important to keep in mind when modeling for 3D printing. I've selected the four corners of this tensioning cut that I've added back here for the two screws. So let's go here and zoom in real close on these two corners and I'll hit Control B to do my bevel. And as I drag on my mouse, you'll notice that there's a point where these two bevels become closer and closer. And if we get too close, what happens is we'll add non-manifold edges to the 3D model. So we don't want to do that. We never want these two points to intersect. We want to make sure that we avoid intersecting these two points at all costs. So you can get close, but never get past the point where they're intersecting. So I'll go ahead and add the Boolean for our tension groove right here. And then make sure our tension groove is in our cuts. And you can see, just like the other modifiers, everything is being applied in real time. None of these modifiers are interfering with each other at all. They're all working in tandem to give us the geometry that we want without actually affecting the geometry of our original object. So now I can go ahead and export the model to bring it into Orca Slicer. And you'll notice that we don't need to solidify the object as the object itself is what makes the geometry solid for 3D printing since there are no holes or non-manifold edges. And now I can safely send this off for 3D printing knowing that there are no issues with the model itself.